Hey folks, welcome back to the Dice Tower. I'm Sam. I'm JT. And this is our bottom five variable player power games. That's a mouthful. That means that this is numbers 10 through 6. This is not the worst variable player power games in existence. I can't believe we're still having to explain this. We're going to release our top five, numbers five through one, over on the flip side. You can watch that after you get done here. Oh, this was tough. Actually, the funny thing, when you say variable player powers, the first thing I think of is like Euro games with faction abilities. Like, hmm. That's kind of where I think of, uh, is kind of that kind of that thing. That would fit. So it's interesting. No, of course it would fit. And yeah. there's multiple subsets. One thing I didn't do hmm. is I excluded anything where, well, most anything where you're just a character. Like if you're just a character development, like a zombie side or Cthulhu Death May Die or even Too Many Bones, which technically has more variable player mm -hmm. stuff than any other game in the world. Um, I excluded most of those character type things where everybody starts out with a base character a mistake. and you gain character abilities during the game. Cause but what if you start out with a character and you have special abilities from the very beginning? I don't know. I don't know. Dungeon crawl character. I don't know. Mistake, man. Kind you of cut out kind of so cut many out variable player power the... games that sure. way. That's one thing, I did, one thing I just realized I forgot to write down the weights of all of my games so that's something that i will not be able to uh but my my weights were considerably higher with this this sure. list than with other lists but yep. i will say this i went i think 11 or 12 pages deep then i and i only usually go 10 and we were still in oh, yeah. the top 3000 oh yeah there's tons of, of games but no, no no that's not what i'm saying i'm saying i looked at 1200 of the top 3,000. Yeah. Well, yeah, because every game has a variable player power, some kind of small change than the next game. I wouldn't say every Almost game. Almost every game. Not every game. 70% of games. <laughs> That's not every game. Come on. There's a lot of games that are very popular mm -hmm. that have this mechanism in For them. For sure. Obviously to various degrees. Yep. What's your weights? I didn't have mine. I forgot to write mine down. Hang me by a yard arm. I'm sorry. My average weight is 3.24. 3.24. Funny enough, my lowest is 2.44. I have been putting my numbers up on the screen uh -huh. because as the editor, I have that freedom. Yep. So, um, but, so I'm going to be interested to see. I do have some heavy hitters on this one, um, but we'll just have to see. All right. Well... Without further ado, let's get to it. Our bottom five variable player power games. Let's hit it. So my number 10 involves <clears throat> dice. And you start the game with certain powers based on what you roll on the dice Yahtzee style. It's called Marvel Dice Throne. The mm. cool thing about this, though, is that your powers can get better over time as you use cards to upgrade them. But what you can do is completely different than what your opponents can do. And one of the reasons why this one slipped through, because one of the caveats that I put in there mm -hmm. was that I didn't put on any just two-player games. Oh, okay. Because you obviously, you have You're your own special <laughs> abilities and they have For their sure. own special abilities. That's a good good call. So I didn't put any just two-player games on there. I thought that was like low-hanging fruit. I Marvel Dice Throne can be more than two players. I think it's best at two players. It's only a two-player game, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty <laughs> but much. That's okay. But you can, you can play, and I've seen a lot of people playing it. I've seen like six-player games of this at some at some of these smaller conventions that are around town, like up at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. I've seen five or six teenagers just sit around a big, large, round, you there know, you eight-foot table and, and just play Marvel Dice Throne all afternoon. Anyway, it's a great little game. Now, one of the caveats, because depending on what kind of game that you like, if you like dice rolling, this is the one that I would absolutely uh, encourage you to play. If you don't like dice rolling and you'd rather use hand management instead of dice... Unmatched would be, would very easily be in this series, uh, be in this spot for me. If you don't like dice rolling, but you like what we've described in Dice Throne, 
give unmatched a try. Any of the ones because they're all different. So that's my number 10 though, Marvel Dice Throne. I like it. You definitely have variable powers. Yes. Every character is completely different. Good pick. All right, my number 10 is a cool game about magic and all things magic. And it's very euro -y. It's very uh, um, uh, tableau building type of game. And that's called Evenfall. In mm. Evenfall, you have a witch's coven or a magic coven of some sort. Um, I think they're all witches, yes. Um, and they hand! all have completely um, asymmetric starting powers and throughout the game powers. But some of them get different... Um, resources. Some of them get only a whole bunch of cards, which are mm -hmm. all resources of a certain type. Um, and then they all have like different stuff on their board um, that they do at, throughout the game. Throughout the game, you are collecting um, places of power, and you're putting rituals on these places of power, and you're moving them from... The cool thing is, is when they're in your outer circle, they are used for resource generation and everything else. And then when you move them to your inner circle, they're good for scoring points um, which is where you get most of your points from but once they go to your inner circle they're no longer good for um, mm -hmm. for uh, resource gathering or resource um, production and stuff like that so there's a cool balance between putting these in your outer circle and then moving them to your inner circle at the right time just so that you have good score at the end so cool. um, but each of the covens um, very different in the way they do things and how they manage um, their abilities so yep very cool. Even fall. She turned me into a newt. That's right. I got <clears throat> better. <laughs> My number nine <clears throat> is Deliverance. Dungeon crawl. Okay. Yeah, kinda, <laughs> kinda. kind of. Yeah, it, it, it is. Horde mode or... But yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. The kind of horde mode dungeon crawler. That's exactly correct. Mm -hmm. Each of the angels that the players can be at the beginning of the game have their own abilities. And it's it's not even like you can all basically do the same things. It's like some some angels are just better at doing these things than this angel. This angel is basically like what you would probably consider like a tank. This sure. one's definitely a supporter. And they all have their different abilities that they're really good at. And party composition actually kind of plays a lot into the game uh, as you're going through it. But on top of that, just like with Marvel Dice Throne, because this is a thing that I really enjoy, uh, you can upgrade your abilities as you go throughout the game. Or the talent cards that you're adding to them will do one of two things. They'll either upgrade some of the abilities that you already have, or they'll give you more uh, abilities. So it's like you start off everybody being different, but you get even more different as the game goes on. And that's one of the coolest things that I really enjoy about variable player powers. First of all, you have to be different than everybody else. Um, and I would prefer that you do that from the very beginning of the game. Not that you kind of start vanilla and you grow different. I think you all need to be different at the beginning of the game for variable player powers to really be a core mechanism. Um, maybe that's just a caveat that I have, but that's kind of what I brought into this list. And Deliverance definitely does that. I think it's a great game, especially for this variable player power mechanism because everybody's very different, not just a little bit, they're very different in what they can do. And sure, you're gonna be doing some of the same things on your turns, but how good you are at them uh, in different ways is very different. So that's my number nine, Deliverance. Fair enough. My number nine is, oh no, not, not flip side of the game. <laughs> Now, my number nine is a cute little card game from Adnoxy Trevichek and Joanna Kajinka, I don't know how to say her name, I'm sorry, uh, from Portal Games called Ooh. Imperial Settlers, Empires of the North. In, um, in this game, you're getting a deck of cards which represents your clan, um, and you will be tableau building. You'll be going out to these islands and taking them over, or you'll either be conquering them or you'll just be uh, destroying them um, to... You can conquer them to bring them into your tableau. Mm -hmm. um, but every one of the clans plays completely different 
Um, like I said, you're going to be sailing out to the islands. You're going to be becoming farmers. Some of the clans are banking. You know, it's all about getting resources and trading them in for, you know, money and all mm. that kind of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of different. Every single clan plays 100% different. And when you pick up a deck of cards and start playing through them, they all feel um, significantly sure. different. So it's a really cool game. Yep. Um, and all the decks being different like that is a really neat puzzle playing against the other decks as well. So I agree. Um, that's Imperial Settlers, Empires of the North. Good pick. Good pick, good pick. My number eight is a 4X game that you can play in just about two hours. Two to two and a half hours. And uh, that is one that is made by my good friend Roy Kennedy. It's called Last Light. Now, this one also, I put it on my short list because, yes, it has variable player powers. You all start with your sure. own little race that you are in the universe at the very beginning of the game. Um, and and it, it, it can determine... How different your uh, things are, your ships are. It can determine different uh, things that you can do while you're on the planet or while you're exploring. There, there's a lot of different ways that you're. There's a lot of different races in there a lot as of well. Different races, yep. Um, it doesn't really have much to do about <clears throat> making your ships different. Your technology is really where that kind of bleeds into making you and your presence on the board much different. So I really struggled with putting Last Light on the list, not because it isn't a good game, but because of how strongly the variable sure. player power was a mechanism in the game. And then I remembered at how badly Lance whooped us. Well, sure, but <laughs> I don't think he can coordinate those two things because he didn't whip us with his asymmetric powers. He whipped us with a couple of cards he got out of the deck, technology cards that he smoked. But it was with. how his asymmetric player powers were able to take advantage of those cards. His race didn't mess with it. I'm pretty sure it did. I don't think it, it did. did. I don't think it did, but I it think could it, be wrong. I think it was a perfect um, storm of all of those coming together in one game. Yeah, that's possible. That was my main catalyst for putting Last Light on this list. Not because... It was a it, it's a bad game in any way, shape, no, shape, or form. No, no. It's just that it didn't feel like it was going to be that big of an impact on the game until I remembered how much it has impacted games in the past, and not just the one with Lance. Fair. That was the main one, mm -hmm. but uh, I remember how people in the past have used their special abilities um, to great effect. So I went ahead and put it on. It's lower on the list because yeah. of that, but um, I. I think it fits, uh, and I, I think it's a great game that does use variable player power as well. So that's my number eight, Last Light. And I, they definitely give you a good start and yes. a good Absolutely. direction. All right, my number eight is, oh, no, not the lightest game on my list, but one of the lighter games on my list. Um, and this game, your variable player powers come from the way the game sets you up. Mm. And this is Roll for the Galaxy. And Roll for the Galaxy, you get a starting planet and, and a starting faction board. And those set up everything you need. I mean, that gives you your start and kind of your focus throughout the game. Because if you can really dial into those, Roll for the Galaxy is a very fast game. If you take too long, you're toast. Um, you have to play into whatever you are handed. Um, and win it and go fast. So I think that's my favorite part about it is how much it pigeonholes you into this is what you should be doing right now. And if you're not doing this and you're trying to play the long game and roll for the galaxy, you're pretty much toast. <laughs> so you, you can win that way. I'm not saying you can't. You can completely <laughs> ignore them, but it's really difficult. So, But if you're playing to the strengths of those, um, yeah, it, it's really awesome the way the game sets you up to... To move forward and cool. how variable that is game to game do you like race or roll better i like roll better yeah so do i yeah absolutely i love dice though so yeah it's not much of it dice are the best not even much of a it's the best comparison. i love you all right my number seven is a game that he already said that he chose not to include and I think that's a mistake. <laughs> this is a great game. It's called Cthulhu Death May Die. I love the differences in the characters in this one. 
Sure. I just love it. It's so fun. Mm. I'm usually not a, uh, a huge Lovecraftian Cthulhu. You know, I don't go goo goo gaga over everything that has Cthulhu's name on it. I just don't. But this game, I don't know what it is. It just, it feels so fun. I don't know. I've only played it a couple times. Got it's, my. It's thematic. It picks yes. you up at the very beginning, and your yes. heart is racing to the end. And I played uh, the nun on both games. Things happen going on. You and should play other somebody else. No, <laughs> I want to. I like because we use we, really we played cool, we played but... different different scenarios. So yep. I played the nun, and I was just like, "This is so fun." Got got our butts kicked in the first game. I still had a whole lot of fun. Second game. Pl chose to play the nun again mm. in a different scenario. Had a great time, very memorable. Um, I just like how all of the different characters are so different. JT, I was... have no idea how many different characters there are. Um, I bet you I have thirty of them. But... Really, that many? Yeah. And you play one. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but holy Moses! On that note, not that I should complain on this video, but um, season three and four are coming out. They're out. Some backers have them now. Mm. Um, Miniature Market is selling it right mm. now. And I still don't have my copy. Oh. So, U.S. backers are not supposed to get them for another month. What? Yeah. So Then how did Miniature Market get it? I don't know. They man. are a U.S.-based company. All the distributors. I know. Distributors are selling everywhere. Um, and we're, mm. we're getting them late. Late, late. Arr. Shame, shame, but shame. Anyways, regardless, end of October, you we're going to have... Name. A bunch more old ones, a bunch more characters, a <laughs> bunch more scenarios. I wonder if we'll get that one to the table. I will. We shall. Oh. <laughs> it's good to show I up. promise I won't play the nun this time. <laughs> my number seven, it's actually kind of a different kind of variable player power, in my opinion, um, which I like, and I like the way they do, do it. Tell. And this is role player. In role player, you get a specific alignment you get a specific um background you have to make this D, &D character but you have a completely different kind of way you do it and then you've got mm. a class card that has your special abilities on it so it's not hugely different throughout but your abilities do matter and what you pick matters and then all of the layout and everything that you have to do is completely different than what other but other people that have works. to do and draft that's cool um you know to play within your character um, mm -hmm. Like I said, it's not like hugely variable player as far as going against each other. Right. Um, but it is on what you need to do on your board. And what you can do. And what you can do. Yeah. So I like it, and, and, I, and I like the way that the variableness is, is made in this game. So. Cool. I think it's a good pick. Um, I don't necessarily like that game as much. It just wouldn't have made my list, but it's a good game. Fair. My number six, the last one of this segment. You'll have to go watch numbers five through one over on the flip side. My number six, however, is a game that probably usually gets looked at as a social deduction or mm. a one versus or a team game or a, a social experiment or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> really a variable player power game because how effective you can be on your team and for your team and how badly you can hurt the humans in Battlestar Galactica really mm. is determined in large part on what your special ability is. Now, you only have one special ability and uh, sometimes you have a secondary special ability that's like a once per game and then there's another thing that you can do uh, anytime. Uh, it usually has that duality in it, but uh, the, the one thing that you can do per game, you really have to use that to its uh, extent. The other thing is just something cool that you can do that nobody else can do. So there isn't a whole lot of differentiation, except if you want to take into, a, if you want to take into effect the kinds of cards that you can pull and the kind of character that you are. Some characters, like the engineers, will draw more of a certain, I think it's the blue card. Sure. The fighter pilots will draw more reds and that type of thing. So there's another level, I guess you could say, to the variable player power mechanism that's there uh, built into what kind of cards you'll have in your hand. So I guess that counts as well. Um, but the games that I've played of it, who you are really matters. How you use your special ability really matters. 
Can you get by without using your special abilities to great effect? Yes, you can. But I really enjoy this game. And I have seen it where the player powers are super important and they super kind of provide the linchpin for how well or how poorly you do. So that's my number six, Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Nice. Nice, nice. My number six... What's your, where's your where's your New York mob boss voice? I need that one. I'm not using it, but forget about it. That's right. That's right. What are you talking about? Huh? <laughs> My number six is Scarface 1920. In Scarface 19, I'm make him an offer he came with fuse. <laughs> right. In Scarface 1920, you're trying to That's control horrible. the burrows, huh? That was horrible, by the way. It was good. I liked it. I don't think so. Trying to control the burrows in New York and. Um, and uh, you a have a variable, your, your gang is completely different. The way yep. your boss does what your boss's abilities are, mm -hmm. um, extremely different than the other ones. Even, even your actions on your board are different than the actions on the next player's board. Yep. Um, there are different variations or they're mixed up in different ways, you know, and connected together in different ways, but the boss's abilities are very different. Um, you're trying to make that booze and build the guns and sell the guns and sell the booze and make the money and... And do all of those kind of things, um, and keep the coppers away from you. So, this is a really, not getting me, really Papa. cool gangster game. Really cool mob game. Yeah, it is. Um, but those, the mobs are very different, and the your your personal boards are very different. So, I've only played this game once, and I loved it. It's but I've cool. only played it once. Yeah. It's a really good game. So yep. that's a great, great pick. All right, well, that is our bottom five variable player power games. And we did have some caveats in there. Yep. He left out games that he should have included. <laughs> no. <laughs> I left out games where you pick a character and go. I left out one of my favorite games of all time for that reason. So I know, you shouldn't you have done that. can't pick on me that. that I can too. I left out a couple of them because Death May Die is also one. I mean, Nemesis is one. And even in Nemesis, your decks are different enough that, you know, maybe I could have put that one on there. Yep, yep. Uh, regardless, I did. I left out most games where you just pick characters like everybody else picks characters. So. Sure. I get it's it. It's all good. I get it. All right. Well, at this point in time, you have absolute, total, and complete freedom to head right over to the flip side. That's Please. where we usually put up more content for you guys to peruse and consume. That's where our top five variable player power games are going to be. Let us know what you think here first. Like, subscribe if you haven't already, and then head over to the flip side, do the exact same thing. Let us know what we did wrong. Put your favorite games down in the comments too. Put your favorite there games in the so comments. There are so many variable player power games. There are a lot of them. This a lot is a of awesome super ones. popular yeah. mechanism, I think. So. All right, well, we're going to head over to the flip side. You guys do the same. If you would, please, thank you very much. We'll see you guys and gals over there. Take care. Bye-bye.